Okay, so on one of the uh, big ideas that we use um, enolates, uh, it's to synthesize stuff. So we, um, it's a tool because if you realize at this point, enolates and the reactions that we use enolate allow us to do carbon-carbon connections, which is a big thing in organic chemistry. So on the board, I have a, um, acetoacetate ester, and this is one of the reactions that can happen, and we can produce a ketone. So the book just brings the whole idea that we have a general, we have a, um, acetate, um, acetoacetate, and then we undergo all these reactions, and we ended up with a ketone. But the book really don't, uh, doesn't explain pretty well on uh, what is going on in each one of the steps. So what I want to do, I want to just go slow in each one of the steps and explain what is going on. So just to clarify how we um, end up with the ketone. Okay, so here we do have an ester. And if you remember, this carbon here is called an alpha carbon. So an alpha carbon can undergo an reaction, remove with a base, remove a hydrogen and make it an enolate, okay? Remember that the base needs to be equivalent to the ethyl part. So I have a, an, an ethyl here and we have an ethyl there. So what the base they do, they come and remove one of the hydrogens and place a double bond. Basically we do have this structure here being formed. Okay. So now that I have my enolate formed, my enolate can, can react with my alkyl halide like a SN2 chemistry style and instead of attacking on another ester, as we learned when we're talking about the chalase and condensation, it can just come and attack this, kick out that, like SN2 chemistry, and we ended up having our, our halide added to our alpha carbon. So basically this first step here is just showing you the formation of the uh, um, enolate and then that the enolate can react like SN2 chemistry and uh, kick out the leaving group that will be a uh, halide and you end up with that particular problem or with that particular product, okay? Now, the next step, if you remember, um, when we have a uh, ester, we learn in chapter 19 about a reaction called saponification where under uh, basic conditions we can dehydrate this particular molecule and end up with, if I don't have the acid, I end up with a carboxylate which is the conjugated base of a carboxylic acid, right? But then we add an acid and we place the hydrogen back here. So when we have an ester, under basic conditions, we can do the dehydration, um, remove a whole molecule of water, and then we use acid and we ended up with a carboxylic acid. I won't undergo this reaction because we have a video called saponification. So if you don't remember this particular step here, how it goes from an ester to make a carboxylic acid, I recommended you to go back and uh, study saponification again. The whole mechanism reaction is really interesting. But we ended up with a carboxylate and then we use an acid to proteinate this guy, this particular position, and we get our carboxylic acid. And we also learn in chapter earlier chapters that when we do have a carboxylic acid, we can heat it up and what we happen is that we have our carboxylic acid in this position and we have a carbonyl group can be an autocarboxylic acid or it can be a ketone and an aldehyde, but we need to have an autocarbonyl group in a beta carbon. 
This is one of the reactions we, we call the keto beta position. So we have an alpha and a beta. So when we have a, a carbonyl group in a beta position and we have a carboxylic acid, if we heat up, we will remove a whole molecule of CO2, carbon dioxide, and we end up with our ketone. So basically, all this guy will be gone. Also, we went through the reaction about decarboxylation. So if you don't remember the reaction about decarboxylation, I would say go back and review the mechanism reaction for it. Review uh, the consequence of this reaction. If I do have another CO2 here, what happens? If I have another functional group instead of a ketone, what will happen? And then we end up with our ketone. So basically, this whole reaction here, this whole synthesis, we work a lot with uh, earlier chapters. We really are dealing with an uh, uh, enolate only in the step number one here. And then we do SN2 chemistry, we get that product, we add in alpha position, and then we do saponification first, and then we um, make it an acid condition, so we protonate it and end up with a carboxylic acid. And the next step, this is the saponification, and then the next step will be decarboxylation, and we get our ketone. So this is one of the key ideas we need to have in order to do good in, when we are synthesizing organic chemistry. So um, look in the products, uh, look in the uh, uh, requirements, you can say, well, this is why I like to, um, when I'm synthesizing something, I like to think and sometimes say out loud, like, oh, I need to have this, and should match with that. Oh, this is SN2 chemistry, so I could keep memorizing and remembering on about each one of the reactions, because at this point, all the reactions that we learn in 351 as well as in 352 will play on, on will be like key ideas and concepts to get our final product.